Shalom family, it's Big Brother Tony coming back at you. Uh, it's been an amazing week. I'm looking at all of what's around me. It's, it's this, uh, <laughs> woo! I guess y'all have been praying for this word because I have gone through a phase this week that just blow <laughs> my mind to the heavens. I have let me let me just give you a little bit of what happened just this week to me. And it was on a bit on the benefit of you all. And what happened was after me and my wife we shared that video and we talked, we talked with you all, I had went in and I ministered and taught on another lesson. Now this teaching was about two, two hours long. And so I was so excited about it because I had so much revelation in it. It was so much happening in it. It was very exciting. I could feel it, you know. And then when I got ready to upload it, the Ruach HaKadosh told me not to upload it to YouTube. And this was Sunday of last week. And she was like, don't upload it to YouTube. And I'm like, okay. So I started trying to figure out, okay, what's going on? What's happening? <laughs> you know? And so my wife, you know, I just, I sat there and I was like, wait a minute. I got this message, but yet I can't upload it. I, I was like, you know, so the Holy Spirit says, I need you to watch the message. The message is for you. And so I was like, what? I preached a message for me. And I began to watch this message last Sunday. And oh my, when I obeyed the Ruach HaKodesh, <laughs> revelation knowledge came out of that message. I couldn't, I watched maybe the first, maybe 16 minutes of it. I couldn't go any further because it was so much that it just wore me out. My, I, I couldn't, it was overwhelming. I had gotten so much revelation knowledge, but this knowledge, it was different. I said, how did the Holy Spirit use me to minister a word unto me? And how is all this revelation knowledge? I'm going on trips. She's taking me in these paths and I'm, I'm seeing things that are not written in the scriptures, but I'm seeing things. It's like she had me tap into another region. And it was just blowing my mind of some of the things that I saw. And so it was like she wanted me to go on a journey with her. And that was what the message was for. And so what happened was on Sunday, I was so blown, I couldn't watch the entire message. I could only get through maybe like 16 minutes of it. It just blew me. It wore me out. It was so overwhelming. It was so much information. And I was like, whoa, whoa, I can't handle this. I can't, I can't, I can't process it, you know. And so... I was like, whoa. <laughs> Ooh, it blew my mind. It blew my mind. It blew my mind. And to this day, today, you know, this is uh, Sabbath. That's where I'm delivering this message. Sabbath, almost a week later, right? I, I haven't had the courage right now to get beyond the 16 minutes of that message because so much happened. And let me share with you this week what happened to me. <laughs> this is <laughs> the Most High is doing something and he's doing something great. And it blessed me so much. It was so powerful. And when that word hit me on Sunday, I didn't have an understanding as to why all this information was flooding me like this. So my physical body went through turmoil. I couldn't find rest. And Wednesday morning about 2 o'clock, the Holy Spirit did a download and she unveiled and revealed so much stuff from 2 o'clock to 3.33. And I sat there and I'm like, I get all of this and it's so exciting that she's downloading that I, I got up out of the bedroom. I ran to the study 
And I had like these, these pieces of paper right here. And I started noting what the Holy Spirit was giving me, was revealing to me. And then I go back to the bed. And then when I go back to the bed, you know, and lay down, uh, I start getting more information. So I had to get up again, go in the study and write more stuff. You know, she kept delivering that. That was so much that she had given me on Wednesday morning. It took me 24 hours to recover for it. My body was going through so much. I couldn't keep my eyes open. I was struggling. I was in pain. I, my body was so tired that it was in pain. And I just couldn't recover. And I began to pray uh, Wednesday night. I said, I, I, I asked for strength and that, that helped me recover from this. And it was like the rock Hakadesh. She was just excited, giving me this word, feeding me this word, and she had to just say, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you recover. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you recover. I'm gonna strengthen you. I'm gonna strengthen you. I'm gonna let you recover." So Wednesday night, she let me sleep all the way through the night and wake up at my normal time. And when I woke up, I was refreshed on Wednesday. And when I was refreshed. I went through that day Thursday and I asked her to give me the wisdom to regulate circumstances and everything, you know, it, it, it was some normalcy coming into my life. And then on Friday, the Holy Spirit revealed to me what had happened. And so when she revealed it to me, my mind is blown still. I, I, I'm nothing. I am nobody. I am totally useless. I can't do nothing on my own. I, I realize I am so insignificant. Just nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. And it's a terrible thing because so many of us get knowledge and we get this information and we get puffed up with this stuff. And we begin to get the big head on this stuff. And we begin to think it's the knowledge, the, the information we have that is empowering us. And so we begin to think to be something great within ourselves. So we put ourselves on a pedestal at times when we get this knowledge and we're thinking we're somebody. But you know, the Holy Spirit showed me that's totally different. That's totally opposite. That's not the way this is supposed to flow. It, 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 we have, oh, we have made such a great mistake thinking that we hold a higher office or a higher standard because of the knowledge that the Holy Spirit has released unto us. The Ruach, let me tell you something. When she told me Friday, it blew my mind. I'm telling you right now, I don't know nothing. I am dumb. I am insignificant. I don't even matter. And some of y'all say, well, why is he, he's being too hard on himself. That's just, no, let me tell you, I am very insignificant. Because what the Ruach HaKadosh revealed unto me yesterday. <laughs> she revealed something to me about this whole week and why I went through this week and why she was so excited about getting me those downloads, even though my physical body, my moral body was just going through turmoil. Couldn't take it. Could not take it. I mean, it got to the point where I don't even have any more vacation days left this year at my job. And it got to the point where, okay, what I'm going to have to do is find out how to get some rest. Because I'm at the point where I'm going to have to just start taking some days off without pay. I mean, it's, it was just getting, I was just getting that worn out. And then you see, even in my voice, you see it's a little bit, my voice is coming back, you know. But I just want you to know something. The Ruach Hakadesh did something in me that she's about to do in you. And so when I listened to that teaching and all that revelation knowledge was flowing and it was hitting me and it was taking me, I didn't realize that my flesh, my mortal body would go through so much. So the Holy Spirit said, what happened was I gave you a message and when you taught that message 
I had you listen to that message for the mere reason of feeding your new man. The new creature inside of you is growing. The spiritual man, the one that I've quickened in you, the new creature into which all things have become new. She says that word, I had you listen to that word so that you could feed that new creature. And she said the same thing happened on Wednesday when I woke you up. <laughs> when I woke you up on Wednesday, woo, she said I was feeding the new creature. See, I wasn't feeding you. It's the new creature I created in you because I quickened your mortal body. And to quicken is to me make alive. She said I quickened your mortal body to bring the new creature forth. The creature that is after the most high. The spiritual creature that I develop in you. This new creature. That is you are my child. I brought you forth. I quicken you. She said so I'm feeding my son. Which is the spirit. That new creature that is on the inside of you. <laughs> Woo! Mine is blown. Mind is blown. Here I am in, in, in my thoughts, in my thinking, in my strength, in my what I can handle and what I can deal with in my ability saying, Holy Spirit, I can't take this. You wear me out. And she says, no, it's not you. It's the new creature. It is my son. It is the one I quickened. It's the one I brought to life. It's the one I made to life. I brought the new creature in you. That is my child. I bear witness with your spirit. I don't bear witness with your flesh. Your natural mama bears witness with your natural behind. But I'm the one that brought forth the spiritual man in you, the new creature in you. So therefore, I bear witness with your spirit, not your flesh. Your spiritual man is my son. I am your mother. Whew. Yeah, I had to take a little pause in that to realize. <laughs> and I began to search scriptures and I realized in Romans it talks about those, the, the spirit bears with us with our spirit that we are the children of the most high. I don't have, so she bears witness with our spirit. Why? Because she knows who she gave birth to. She quickened your mortal body, which means to make alive. She brought alive a new man, a new creature in you. The new creature is of the most high. It's not of the flesh. Very powerful. So she took me on this journey to feed my new man, to feed her son, which is the new creature, the spiritual. <laughs> I told, oh my goodness, y'all, this is blowing my mind. The rock, how could this is blowing my mind? Oh, I can't. I am insignificant. She's doing all this to feed the new creature in me. So when the word comes out, it's going to feed the new creature in you. You are her children. She quickened your mortal body. She made alive the new creature in you. And that's why you must be born again. Let's go. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, I got so much. I got so much. Hold on. Woo! So much. Okay. Here we go. Let's go to John. Let's go to John chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 5. Okay? John chapter 3, verse 5 in your King James Version Bible. Let's go there. Then. Yeshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of the most high. You cannot enter into the kingdom except you be born of the water and of the spirit. <laughs> and you got people out there teaching that you don't need to be baptized. Huh? You got people out there teaching against this. He said, born of the water and of the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of the most high. Now let's go to verse uh, six. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Okay. 
And then verse 7, he says, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. What, what did he say right there? Ye must be born again. It is a commandment. You have to be born again. You have to be. Let's get a precept. Let's get a precept on it. Let's go to the pearl of great price. Let's go to the book of Moses. Let's go to chapter 6. Pearl of great price. The book of Moses. Chapter 6. Let's get a precept. Because guess what? He said when he came, it was his father's word that he's speaking. So therefore, this commandment which was issued by Yeshua in this scripture was also issued by the father unto Adam. Let's go. Pearl of great price. Book of Moses. Chapter 6, and we're going to go to verse 59. Chapter 6, verse 59. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> verse 59, it says, That by reason of the transgression cometh the fall, which fall bringeth death, inasmuch as ye were born into the world by water and blood and the Spirit, which I have made, and so became of dust a living soul. Even so, ye must be born again into the kingdom of heaven. Who says this right here? The heavenly father is telling Adam this right here. It's a commandment. Being born again is a commandment. And it's a commandment required to enter into the kingdom of the most high. Let's get another precept. Let's go to the book of Mosiah in, in the book of Mormon. Now, we went from the King James Version. We went to the Pearl of Great Price to the book of Moses. Now, we're going to go to Mosiah in the book of Mormon. Mosiah chapter 27, verse 25. Let's go there. Mosiah chapter 27, verse 25. And it reads, And the Most, and the most High said unto me, Marvel not that all, all, Mankind, yea, men and women, all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people must, must, must. I said like my apostle uh, Aia three times, must, must, must be born again. Yea, born of the Most High, changed from their carnal fallen state to a state of righteousness being redeemed of the most high becoming his sons and daughters what i tell you his sons and daughters and thus they become what new creatures that's what the holy spirit was speaking to in me the new creature this week thus they become new creatures and unless they do this they can in no wise inherit the kingdom of the most high some of y'all call yourselves being in the kingdom, but you haven't went through the requirement. To whom much is given, much is required. Have you met the requirement? Have you met the requirement to be in the kingdom? You must be born again. You must be born again. Have you met the requirement? Oh my. Oh my, I just thought we're just washing up the water by the word. Oh, 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 let's go to that scripture. That's the scripture they tow up. Oh, let's go to that scripture. Ruach Hakadesh wants to explain something to you there. Let's go. Have your way, Ruach. I love you so much. Have your way. Okay, let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse. That's it's got verse 26. Let me see. I may go up to verse 25. Let me go here. Ephesians chapter 5. Let's go to verse 25. Let me pull it up over here. Now, let's get some understanding on this scripture. <laughs> Mama Ruach going to straighten it out. She's going to help you out with this one. She's going to be a blessing to you with this one. Because guess what? Guess what? We just read that we must be born again. And to be born again is what? It's a commandment. Everyone must be born again. That Mosiah is powerful. You know, we went, we, we done precepted through the King James, through the Pearl of Great Price, and the Book of Mormon. They all witnessed and supported one, one another, right? Let's go through here. Let's see what's happening here, right here in this scripture. Husbands, love your wives, even as the Messiah also loved the church 
and gave himself for it, okay? That he might do what? Sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And that he might present to himself, what? A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So, that church is talking about the body of Yeshia, okay? Or the Mashiach, or however you want to say that. The, the body of Yeshia, okay? He's talking about his body. It's a spiritual body, right? And right here, in your Book of Mormon, oh my goodness gracious, I've got to go in here. Let me, I'm going I'm to do it. Ooh, I'm going to go there. We're going to go. Right here, in this verse 26, he said that he might sanctify how are we sanctified? How are we sanctified? We're going to get into that. That means set apart. But we're set apart when there's a cleansing by the blood of Yeshia. It's through repentance. Okay? And then he said he cleansed it with the washing of water. Now, right here, this word water, okay? This word is hudor. Okay? It means natural water, physical water, literal water. Okay, so it means a washing, a cleansing. Okay, it means baptism here. That's what it's talking about. Baptism. It says all must pass through the water. <laughs> you got to pass through the water. And it says by the word, which means by the word. The word is the commandment. It's a commandment in the word that we must be sanctified and we must pass through the water. It is a commandment. And we have precepts. See, they, you want to pull this scripture out and say you don't need the water. And right here, this, this hudar word water is the same water that John the Baptist put Yeshia in. Okay? It's the same water that the Most High told Adam to go in. It's the same water. Literal water. It's not, no, literal water is what he's talking about here. But he said it's by the word, by the commandment. Those two things, repentance and baptism. See, he's stepping it up to the order of Melchizedek right here. And all of you in this order of Aaron, this Aaronic order, you are not understanding the order of Melchizedek. Those are the first two things. He, what did he give John the Baptist? He told John the Baptist told everybody, repent and what? Be baptized. John the Baptist had Melchizedek all up in his system. Repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized. And repent, repent and get in this water. All must pass through the water to be a part of the body of Yeshia. And if you ain't passed through the water and you denying the water, you're not a part of the body of Yeshia. You're an imitation. You are anti-Christ. Don't be playing with that word. All must pass through the water. All must pass through the water. All must be sanctified. Repentance. Sanctification. Cleansing. Water. Let's go. We're going to get back over to the pearl of great price. And we're going to break some things down. We're going to get you to your understanding on some things so that you know. <laughs> that you know that you will not ever. Anybody tell you you don't need to be baptized, you don't need to be that? Run from them. You'll know to run from them now. Because they're telling you, they're telling you what they need to tell you to keep you out of the body of Christ. That keep you out of the kingdom of the most high. Now he already said you must be born again to inherit the kingdom of the most high. Right? To be a part of the kingdom. You can't even be a kingdom worker if you haven't repented and been baptized. You ain't even qualified to be a worker in his kingdom. You ain't even qualified to be a part of the body of Yeshua. So how you gonna sit up here on the on the corner with some scriptures? I'm, it, man, look here, man. I, 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 no, 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 no. Book of Moses, pearl of great price. Let's go to Book of Moses, pearl of great price. Let's do this thing. Verse sixty, chapter six, verse sixty. It says, "For by the water ye keep the what commandment." What? What did he command you to be born again? He said, by the water, huh? By the water, you keep the commandment. You must be born again. It's a commandment. You got to repent. Oh, my 
Goodness. And pass through the water. Tell your neighbor, pass through the water. Pass through the water. Period. Pass through it. Pass through the water. Get in the water. Don't be scared of the water. What you what? Get in that water. Get in it. Tell him. Get in it. Be baptized. He said, For by the water ye keep the commandment. By the spirit ye are justified. Okay? How are you justified by the spirit? Well, when you pass through that water, when you repent, let me tell you, all three go together. Oh, this is powerful. All three go together. All three witness together. The water, the blood, the spirit. All three witness together. All three go together to get you into the kingdom. It is required. All three that you honor to get into the kingdom. Because you honor the commandment of the Most High. You honor the commandment of Yeshia. What he told you, you must be born again. So these three are the witness, the water, the spirit, and the blood. See, because when the spirit, ye are justified. Which means she quickens your mortal body. And brings to life the new creature in you. She births the new creature. She is the mother of your new creature. It is the spiritual man. Then it says, by the blood ye are what? Sanctified. By the blood ye are what did what, what it say in that other scripture? That he might sanctify and cleanse it by the blood. <laughs> you are sanctified by the blood. By the blood you are sanctified. You are cleansed by the water. And when you step into the water, because you have repented of your sins, you go down in the water the cleansing of the water and you come up and the Holy Spirit will quicken you because she doesn't deal with sin. She doesn't dwell in the unclean temple. So when now when you repent of your sins and you go into that water, that physical water, that baptism water and raised up out of that water, you have been washed and cleansed. And according to the commandment, she has now the purpose of quickening your mortal body and bringing forth the new creature. And if you didn't get down into the water, if you did not repent and get down into the water, oh man. If you did not repent and get down into the water, you are never ever going to see the new man rise up in you. If you got into the water and you didn't repent, you are not going to see the new man rise up in you because you went into the water with sin and you raised up out of that water with sin. You didn't repent. That's why I said repentance and baptism are the narrow gate. Which leads to the straight path. Both of them. The path is the kingdom. It's the path to the kingdom. You can't get on the path until you get through the gate. You sitting up here talking about you don't need to go into the water. But you act like you're on the path. You ain't on the path. You ain't in the kingdom. It's required to be born again. Holy Spirit ain't going ain't to put the new creature in you and you filled with sin. You ain't went through the requirement. Baptism, repentance and baptism are the narrow gate. To the straight path. To the kingdom. That's why they told you you got to be born again. Because it's the new man that walks on the path. It's not the flesh. <laughs> it's not this carnal man. It's not this flesh. Huh? It's not this mortal body. This mortal body doesn't walk on the path. This mortal body walks on the earth. Huh? You probably in your house right now. This mortal body ain't on the path. This mortal body is in the house and wherever you at on this earth. It's the new man that walks on the path to the kingdom. Let the new man rise up in you. Tell your neighbor, I met the requirement. I repented. And I was baptized. Come on. New man rise it up in you. Ooh. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Mm. Ooh, let's go. We're going to go right here. Mm. <laughs> Book of Moses, chapter 6. Let's go to verse 64. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it happened to Adam. It's supposed to happen this way with you. Because he told Adam, you must be born again to get into the kingdom. Huh? He told him you must be born again to get into the kingdom. Watch what happened to Adam. Let's go to verse 
64. Let's read this. Let's get this thing going. Verse 64, and it came to pass when the Lord had spoken or when the Most High had spoken to, with Adam, our father, Adam, our father, father, uh, I know, our natural father, one blood from all nations. Adam, our father, that Adam cried unto the Most High. Let me tell you what, I guarantee you in that cry, he repented of all his sins. He cried out and asked him to forgive him. He cried out, you hear me, from the depth of his soul because he knew what his penalty was to all mankind. It says, Adam cried unto the Most High. And he was caught away by the spirit of the Most High and was carried down. What? And was carried down. What? And was carried down into the what? Water. Huh? Into the who door? The water. The same who door that's in that other scripture where they're telling you it's just the word. The same who door. The same water. He was carried down into the water and was laid under the water. Laid, physically laid under the water. Not figuratively. Not, oh man, come on. Woo. This, oh, this is, oh. Oh, I gotta get some of this. this oh, it's taking me places, y'all. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Ruach. Oh, thank you. I love you so much, Ruach. I love you so much for this word. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the Ruach told me, she said, she said, Brother Tony, don't you be ashamed of your tears. She said, because all this word you given, I'm giving you is bringing you into the fullness of joy. And she said, the overflow of that joy is tears. And she said, there's a room in heaven that we have these bottles stored up for every tear you shed. And when you walk in this room, it has bottles with your name on it. And he said, she said, there's a book. And when you open up the book, the pages are empty. And then you can grab a droplet, one droplet or one drop of your tears and drop it on that empty page. And when that tear drops on that empty page, it tells the whole story of, as to why that tear was shed. From a tear, your story is told in heaven. <laughs> so don't be ashamed of your tears, especially when you got this joy and you're getting this word and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh is getting you so excited. She said the overflow of that excitement is tears. You get so joyful that the tears just run. They just flow. Oh. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm not ashamed of this word. Oh. Lord, watch this. Watch this. That Adam cried unto the Most High, and he was caught away by the Spirit of the Most High, and was carried down into the water. Not thinking about the water. <laughs> not just having a thought of it. He's carried down physically into it. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about the first one. He got baptized with Adam. Oh, Adam was baptized. What, 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 what? You're going to say no, everybody wasn't baptized? Everybody in the kingdom was baptized to get into it. What? Watch this. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, I'm trying to get through this. He was carried down into the water and was laid under the water and was brought forth out of the water. Remember, he cried out. He repented. And then he was carried down under the water and brought forth out of the water. That's what I'm telling you. This is how you get into the kingdom. This is the key to the kingdom. See, he's given us the keys through the order of Melchizedek. There's a commandment that you must be born again to get into the kingdom, right? So Adam is going through the commandment right here. He cried out and repented. Therefore, he was sanctified. So when he went into the water, he was set apart for the purpose of entering into the kingdom. The water was washing him for the mere purpose of entering into the kingdom. Oh, the water was just dressing him up for the mere pur purpose of entering into the kingdom. Because guess what happens next? <laughs> and thus he was what? Baptized. What? What did he say? Going through the water? In the water? They call it what? Baptized. And what do we read in that other scripture? <laughs> <laughs> For by the water you keep the commandment. Oh, okay. Well, here we go. We're going there. We're doing it. Okay. And thus he was baptized, and the Spirit of the Most High descended upon him, and thus he was born of the Spirit. I'm trying to tell you, you're born of the Spirit. The new man, the new creature is created, birthed through the Spirit. 
and became quickened in what? The inner man. She quickens your mortal bodies. That means to make alive, to bring alive. And this new man, this new creature, is created. Behold, you are a new creature. <laughs> Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. The new creature. The new creature. The gate has been opened. And it opens up unto the new creature. And that is the creature that walks on the path to the kingdom. Your body is here on the earth. Your creature is on the path to the kingdom. Oh, that's powerful. If y'all don't get that, oh my goodness. <laughs> if y'all don't get that, you're yet still in your flesh. You don't even have a new man in you. You better get that. Get, up, get it up in your spirit. Oh my goodness gracious. I had to let that sink in for me just now. That was powerful. Watch this. And he said, thus he was baptized in the spirit of the Most High descended upon him. Thus he was born of the spirit and became quickened in the inner man. And he heard a voice out of the heaven saying, thou art baptized with fire. Now he's receiving the baptism, the gift of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Adam received the gift of the Holy Ghost with fire. The Most High, voice out of the heaven saying, thou art baptized with fire and with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> this is the record of the Father and the son from henceforth and forever. And thou art after the order of him who was without beginning of days or end of years. See, this is the order of Melchizedek, this commandment for those to enter into the kingdom. To have the new creature, the spiritual man built up in them, born in them. To get on that path that leads to the kingdom. That's the order of Melchizedek. You become a spiritual creature. That's why I told you I am insignificant. My, my mortal body is nothing. That's why it's left out here in this earth to deal with this ungodly world. But I set myself as enmity between the world. And that's why in my spirit man, I hate sin. In my spirit man, I build up my intolerance against sin. In my spirit man, I don't want nothing to do with sin. Because my soul, which is, the, which is of my natural man, and my natural instincts, my taste and my senses and all this stuff, my soul, you know, it has to be controlled. It has to be put in check. It has to be put under subjection. Because the Bible says, whoever you yield your members to, you are subject unto that. Whether you yield it unto sin or you yield it unto righteousness. But how can you how can you yield yourself unto righteousness? It's in your spirit, man. Your spirit man has to make the dedication to say, I, I am going to obey everything about this order of Melchizedek. It's a spiritual order. And so in this order, we don't like sin. We repent. And we turn away from sin. We build up a hatred towards sin. We build up an enmity towards sin. So now that your spirit man is built up, your soul has only to follow your spirit man. Your soul is strengthened. Your soul is protected. Because now your, your spirit man says, I hate sin. And now your soul says, I no longer have a lustful desire to sin. Because the spirit man in whom in which I'm subjected to now into this kingdom walk. This spirit man that has the highest authority of Melchizedek operating in me. The spirit man that is on the path to the kingdom and can see the spiritual things of the kingdom. <laughs> I have to submit myself unto. And the spirit man that's on the inside of me, he has created enmity against sins. Therefore, my lust for sin in my soul is no longer there. I no longer have the taste to sin. I no longer have the desire to sin because the spiritual man has called sin the enemy. So therefore, since sin is my enemy, then what I'm going to do, I'm not even going to knock on sin's door. I'm not even going to pull up in the driveway. I'm just going to pass by the house as though they don't exist <laughs> because my spirit man says sin is the enemy. So therefore, my soul has no desire to sin. That's how you get above it. That's how you get beyond sin. You become born again and you let that spiritual man be fed all the spiritual things of the kingdom. He's on the path to the kingdom while your soul and your physical body is down here dealing with stuff on the earth. But let the man inside of you be greater. Let him be the great one. Let him take you to the places you need to go in the kingdom so that you will be righteous without spot, without blemish. That church, that body, 
of Yeshia. You will be in the kingdom, that kingdom worker that works for the glory of the kingdom, not the shame of the kingdom because you want to stay in sin and tell people you're working for the kingdom. You're presenting shame. You ain't presenting glory. The new man on the inside, he presents glory. He don't present shame. He walks in the glory of the majesty of the most high. That's why when we suffer for the kingdom's sake, we count it all joy because we know we walked in the glory. We don't have a shame to look back on when we obey his commandments. We are born again. That new man rises up. And that new man is the new man that is the new creature that keeps us on the path to the kingdom. This word is for your new man. And if you have not went through this baptism, you repented and been baptized, continue in your spirit. Continue in your heart and in your prayers to seek it from the Most High. And He's going to make a way for you. He's going to make a way for you to get it done. All you have to do is pray and ask the Most High for it and He's going to get it done. Because it's a commandment unto all the people. So don't let nobody teach you out of being baptized. Don't, no, don't let nobody take away the taste from being baptized. You hunger and thirst for that as you do any kind of ounce of righteousness. You hunger and thirst for getting everything done and in order. You hear what I'm saying? He does things in decency and in order. This is an order to the order of Melchizedek. This is an order to get into the kingdom. This is an order. Adam completed this order. He did this thing. Powerful. Very powerful. A man who was made from the dust of the earth. A man who was made from the dust of the earth. Do you understand the significance of the dust of the earth? I went on a journey, a revelation. The new man took me on a journey and revealed something about the dust of the earth. Let me share something with you about the dust of the earth. Why the most high in creation? He looked at the lights. He created light, the moon. He created the sun for the day. He created everything and he examined everything he created in the beginning. This is a journey that my spiritual man has taken me on about the creation. He showed me that God, the Most High, saw how, when the Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, moved upon the face of the water. Do you know when the Ruach HaKadosh moved upon the face of the waters, she never stopped moving. So when he separated the grounds, the earth from the water, <laughs> the Ruach HaKadosh was still moving. And she created wind. She created movement around the entire face of the earth. And just as the Most High examined everything he created, he saw the sun and saw that it was good. He created the moon and saw that it was good. Everything that he created, he saw that it was good. And when the Ruach HaKadosh moved over the land, the earth, he saw. This is the new creature showing me something in Revelation knowledge. That's why it's time for you to tap into Revelation knowledge. The new creature is the one that can tap into kingdom knowledge. The Revelation knowledge from the kingdom that's given by the spirit. It's the new man in you that taps into this knowledge. So he showed me as the most high saw the spirit move upon the land. He saw the dust of the earth. In the spirit. In the wind. And he saw the dust, not the dirt. The dust of the earth traveling in the wind. And he showed me that when the Most High saw the dust in the wind and traveling with the wind, and the wind was the Ruach HaKadosh, 
He says, that's what I'm going to use to make man so that the man can be in the spirit and led by the spirit, travel with the spirit. I'm using the dust, not the dirt. And when you open up your window, you go to a window where the sun is shining in. And you open that window up and you watch that dust in the air. And you just move your hand and create a wind. And watch how that dust moves in that wind. And it's still in there. It doesn't fall to the ground. It's still in that wind. He said, I use that dust to create the man. Because the dust flowed with the spirit and remained in the spirit. When she moved upon the land, it took the dust. What? That's revelation knowledge from the new man. He took the dust. It has a significance. And I'm going to end this. And I hope you were blessed. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I love you dearly. This is one of the journeys that the Holy Spirit took me on. And I know there's other journeys because I've seen other things. So we're going to go on a few journeys. And these journeys are to build our new creature, the new man, which is after the most high. <laughs> oh, what a blessing. I love you so much. The Ruach HaKadosh loves you so much. Ahaya loves you so much. Yeshaya loves you so much. Know that you are loved and know that whatever you need, you pray for it and seek, especially when it lines up in this word. You pray for whatever this word tells you you need to get a hold of, and he's going to meet those needs. He shall supply all, not some, all your needs according to his riches and glory. His riches in glory. This commandment came from glory. So, guess what? He's going to supply it once you ask for it. Be blessed. Shalom.